We are live? Yes. Can we begin? Uh, shall I admit all these waiting? Yes. Yes. Nadim, I'm... Nadim, can I begin? Yes, yes, please. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Good evening and welcome everyone, dear teachers, students, and the speaker of the day, Mr. Nadim Khan. Wait for a minute. Good evening and welcome everyone, dear teachers. Dear teachers, students, and the speaker of the day, Mr. Nadim Khan. Dear students, I feel privileged to announce Learn From Home webinar series for a higher level English medium schools organized by MNET with the technical support of INET Connect, featuring speakers like Dr. Manjushri Sardesh Pandey, um, the chairperson of the Board of Studies, Bal Bharti, Pune, Mr. Nadim Khan, academic coordinator of Chess Ra, Aurangabad, and the Board of Studies member, Bal Bharti Pune, Mr. Avinash Rade, Board of Studies member, Bal Bharti Pune, Ms. Renita Augustin, state resource person of Chess Ra, Aurangabad, Ms. Vinita Nair, she is a resource person of English New Syllabus. She is the author of several academic and non-academic textbooks. Then teacher, no. then Mrs. Sylvia Francis, state resource person of Chess Ra Aurangabad. Learn from Home webinar series starts from the fourth, started from the 4th of August 2020. Uh, and it will continue till 21st of August daily, except except on Wednesdays and Sundays at 6 p.m. And this series will provide a wonderful platform to know and understand your English activity sheet. I request all our participants to be a part of this series, series that would guide you to deal your English activity sheet according to the state board norms and criteria. And today we have with us Mr. Nadeem Khan, a very dynamic personality, a versatile speaker, a very good orator, so, Mr. Nadeem Khan is teaching English at Nutan Kanya Junior College, Bhandara. He is a state academic coordinator of English online project run by State Institute of English for Maharashtra. He did his schooling from Samarth Vidyalaya Lakhni, graduation from J.M. Patel College, Bhandara, and pursuing PhD from Baba Sahib Ambedkar Marathwada University, Aurangabad. He is a certified trainer for EFLU Hyderabad on Relo India sponsorship. He has worked on many state government projects run by the government of Maharashtra, RMSA Mumbai, uh, SCRT Pune, SIEM, Aurangabad, Tata Trust, and British Council. He is also Board of Studies member of Maharashtra State Bureau of Textbook Production, Balbharti Pune. He is a treasurer of INET Association of English Teachers, an active member of Bhandara English Teacher Club, and ITFL UK and Kisol US. He's passionate about wildlife photography and runs an NGO that works around teacher reserves, tiger reserves in Central India. Without wasting much time, I asked Mr. Nadim Khan to begin his session. And today he is going to discuss question number 4B, that is summary writing. Yeah, Over thank to you, you very sir. Much. Yeah, thank you very much, Renu, ma'am. And uh, dear students, today, uh, Summary writing, it's a writing skill. And today we will see how to write a summary towards the end of this online lesson. So I request you to grab your <coughs> copies and pencil, pen, and sit with me today and all other teachers so that we would be able to write the summary towards the end, okay? So here goes my presentation slide. 
i hope this is visible to all yes sir yeah thank you very much so here goes the first page summary writing it's a writing skill and the activity is there in the activity sheet of uh, high school the 10th standard and this uh, this new evolution pattern has introduced this activity for the lower level english as well so students who are from uh, higher level as well as lower level this today's webinar is useful for both categories now this activity is there so in the question number 4 uh, b yeah okay and this is a comprehension based question so there are different questions the blueprint of the activity sheet of the 10th higher level mentions there are certain categories of questions so around 50% of questions are based on knowledge or the understanding or we call it comprehension so this belongs to the comprehension question there are some other questions like uh, analytical questions and some other questions like creativity questions some more questions on application of knowledge as well so this belongs to the knowledge understanding and comprehension category of the blueprint of the activity sheet <clears throat> now uh, this summary writing is a b question so in a question there is a non textual passage and you have to read comprehend and answer the activities on that uh, unseen passage we call it the non textual passage and the instruction given in the question number 4b is read the above passage given in question number 4a that you have already read because you have answered questions over it and write the summary of it suggest a suitable title to your summary and it carries five marks so let's see what are the evaluation criteria for these five marks okay so these you can read for title there is one mark okay for properly giving the overview means the main points supporting points means giving the central idea or central theme it carries two marks and your use of appropriate language carries two marks so this is the evaluation criteria this is taken from the model answer sheet of 10th standard of higher level english and these are the guidelines for summary writing and these are uh, guidelines uh mentioned in the new evaluation pattern of 10th standard high level english so there are some guidelines i have taken it from the new evaluation pattern first guideline mentions the aim of summarizing and as you can read the aim of summarizing of a passage is to enable students to understand the main points and express them in their own language in short so this aim gives the entire idea or what is expected from a student in writing a summary or summarizing a paragraph so you have to understand the main points and express them in the, your own language you don't have to pick the sentences from the passage and rewrite it got it so it's expressing in your own language that counts here the second guideline is that the student should read the given passage very carefully to understand it so uh, a lot of uh, students tend to skip many uh, points while writing the summary why because they don't read it very well so you have to read the given passage carefully so that you understand it better third is suggesting title is mandatory now uh, when we think from the evaluation point of view title carries uh, importance so there are students who write title at the very beginning after reading and there are students who write title at the end 
I mean, after writing the summary, they go back to the title and write it. But title shouldn't be skipped or shouldn't be forgot. It's a very important thing to write proper title. Fourth guideline says the student should express the theme or gist of the passage in his own words. Now, this is very important. You don't have to just pick up the sentences or the phrases or the clauses or the expressions from the input passage and don't just copy paste it in your summary. You will get marks, no doubt, in the evaluation. If you have written it, if you have attempted it, you will get marks, but you won't get the good score. OK, so this is uh, actually I'm talking about marks at the very beginning, and this is very important because we are preparing about our 10 standard students for uh, the coming examination. So I am looking from that point of view as a teacher. So I must tell you that you have to use your own words to write the summary. <clears throat> now, uh, this fifth guideline carries two marks. Again, I'm talking about the marks. The student should use appropriate vocabulary, grammar and language while summarizing. We call it a summarizing language. So whatever words you choose, what type of sentences you are using, like for example, you may use complex sentences because uh, there are number of sentences and if you are going to club them together, you are going to synthesize it, transform it from a compound sentence or you can merge two or three simple sentences into one and create your own complex sentence. So that language feature you have to use when you are using uh, when you are going to write a summary. And you should not express your own opinion opinion or no extra points. No personal opinion should go there in the summary. So that is very important because uh, we have we uh, tend to uh, write a lot of answers for other topics and other subjects in our evaluation. And what do we do? We, towards the end of every answer, we write one critical comment or our opinion, whatever we feel about that. So we have the habit of writing such kind of answers and paragraphs. So this should be avoided. This shouldn't happen over there in the summary writing. No personal opinion or extra points. Last but not the least, the student should avoid exact repetition of sentences while summarizing. Now you will ask, <clears throat> there are thoughts given in the original uh, passage and you want to reproduce it or rephrase it in a summary. So there will be repetition. So the questions can be asked, then how to write a summary? So the simple answer is, Avoid the repetition, just rephrase the ideas that you are using. Rephrasing uh, helps in writing, summary writing. So you can ask why there is a question on summary? What is the importance of summary writing? Why you are asked to write a summary? So dear students, we are in the information era and there is a lot of information with the inventions like the new uh, high speed internet, the data is doubling and multiplying with a very high rate. Like for example, uh, in last decade or before that in, or in last century, sorry. The data uh, used to uh, come in the form of a text or image, but now, uh, in today's era, that is information era, we call it, the data is coming in megabytes and gigabytes in video. So a lot of data is coming, a lot of information is coming. So uh, when we are dealing with this information, that's a big data and a lot of information coming 
from all industry, huge information. Like we are on a super highway of information. So grasping this data becomes very tough and interpreting this data for interpretation of this data so that it becomes a short usable data. For example, uh, there is a big uh, news over there and people uh, who used to read newspapers the other day, they used to read in detail. There was comprehensive coverage in newspapers. But today what happens? You have the apps like InShorts or other news flicks and you get all this information news in very small, small packets, shorts. So that is a summary. There is one app called Napili and that is used for news writing. Uh, I use it for teaching the news writing. We will deal it in the next session. So it gives a detailed information in the next page. But what, what happens in the first page? You get a short summary of the news. So summary writing is a practical skill. It's a real life skill and it is very important. So you get this summary writing question in your high school, but this is not going to leave you. This question will be there in the junior college in the senior college examinations. And when you appear for any other competitive examination, like if you appear for NDA or UPSC or MPSC or any other examination, even if you go for, even if suppose, suppose you are appointed as a manager in a bank or suppose you are appointed as uh, the deputy commissioner of police. And when you get a promotion, there are some departmental exams. And there in those papers, in all these competitive examinations, there are questions on PRECI writing. So P-R-E-C-I-S, the pronunciation is PRECI. But PRECI writing is similar to summary writing. We call PRECI writing and summary writing the same thing. So this is very practical skill and uh, it is very useful for our day to day and real life. That's why uh, it gains a lot of importance in our evaluation pattern. So there are certain parameters of summary writing. These parameters are to know what summary to produce. You need some parameters. And one thing is there that there is no one best summary. So as we know, and as we believe that every child is unique, like you are some uh, 100 or some more people watching over there on YouTube and you all are different. Your learning needs are different, okay? So if I give you one paragraph, a passage and ask you to write a summary, will it be the same for all of you? What say? I expect uh, you to write in the comment or chat. No. The summary will be different for different people. Okay. So there are different people and if we give a same kind of uh, assignment or summary writing to you. Thank you for all the comments in the on the YouTube as well. I'm watching both. So there is no one best summary, but still for the evaluation, for, from the evaluation point of view, we have set certain parameters. We have a criteria that I have already told you. And if you follow that pattern of evaluation, definitely you will get full marks. Now, these are the characteristics of a summary and I want you to take it down. Please take this down on your copies, in your copies. First characteristic of a summary is derivation. So derivation is when you are given a passage, uh, what some people do, they extract and they don't abstract. They don't write abstract, they just write extract. So uh, what is the difference between extract and an abstract? An extract is when there, there is a passage given to you and you pick up 
some expressions or sentences from uh, that, that passage and rewrite it with quotations and everything as it is it becomes an extract but here in summary writing you have to write abstract abstract is uh, is like there are different kinds of summaries actually there are project summaries abstract is also a summary outline is also a summary so we are looking at the abstract the summary the general information given in a very short text we also call it gist okay that is abstract that is a summary that gives an overview and main idea of what is what passage is given to you that is abstract so that abstract what you are writing it should be coherent now uh, coherence and cohesion are the terms which are used by teachers but for you i will just tell you what coherence means means it's natural in its flow means it follows the unity of logic means suppose for example there are some three points in any passage given and you start uh, marking the important points so you have to write those points in the same order of their appearance in the passage given passage you won't write the third point in the first place and then you will go back to the first and then fourth and second so you have to follow that logical sequencing that is the coherence so it should appear fluent in simple language it should appear connected because what happens when people start picking up some phrases or sentences it appears that the views are given in disjointed manner so we shouldn't give this disjointed view we have to give an overview that's why the language should appear fluent there is one question on uh, youtube what is the meaning of quotations quotations means uh, the statements made by the author in quote and unquote that is a quotation okay so third characteristic of a summary is partiality and this we have already discussed this was also there in the guidelines whatever you write it should appear as a neutral writing you shouldn't be partial to any one view like for example if the passage is given uh, and if the passage given to you speaks of the economic or environment factor let's take for example nature and the development so when you are writing a summary you have to be neutral and present what is given in the original passage you don't have to be evaluative that man is uh, spoiling nature uh, for uh, development for the sake of development no if it is given there in the passage then you can use it no doubt but when you are giving or writing a summary you have to be neutral impartial and please don't be evaluative don't give any personal opinion okay <clears throat> now in summary writing these are some myths some people think that summary is like an extract like some people think that okay summary writing is very easy we can pick some sentences we can pick some phrases and put it together and it becomes a summary actually it's a very tough question and when we go by the rules of evaluation of a summary at higher level like for departmental exams and competitive exams like upsc mpsc it becomes the criteria becomes tough precise writing is the toughest activity or question some people feel that summarizing is analyzing so some people have the tendency to analyze what is written and they become judgmental and they give analysis of what is written so there is no need to analyze the data or information given to you just be neutral and rephrase what is written that is summary uh, there is one more question uh, raj more can we take questions at the end raj i will certainly take this question up okay 
so uh, youtubers who are there watching uh, we can take questions at the end i will be there no problem then is summarizing there is one more myth that summarizing is discarding pronouns and articles so people feel that okay there are 100 words given in a passage so we should write uh, one third so there will be 30 words around 30 35 33 words and people just start eliminating or discarding or removing all the pronouns and the articles from the given passage and they reproduce what's given over there except all these grammar items so that that is also not a summary so these are certain myths and these are busted today now when you are writing a summary there are certain stages of summarization first stage is topic identification that stage is important because this thing happens before you go and write a summary okay so you read it you read the passage we in the terms of teacher language we call it skimming okay when you get uh, read something for getting the general information so when you skim through the passage when you read it so you identify the relevant material from the text so what do you do at this time you usually uh, mark those important areas you underline it or you highlight it or i do what i do i put uh, numbers there number 1 number 2 number 3 instead of uh, highlighting or uh, this underlining it so that helps me to pick up the ideas and put together according to the logic and their occurrence in the passage second thing is interpretation and compaction now <clears throat> compaction is an easy way what is mean by compaction in compaction you just omit things just make them compact and you use a uh, slightly uh, slight information from the given passage but there is a difficult way so uh, there is no harm in uh, using compaction but don't go the easy way i will suggest you to go the hard way if you want uh, what i can say a uh, good score again i am talking you if you want a good result i would say reinterpret the data so interpretation is more important than compaction in summary writing and this is the most important stage of summarization so you gain some information you understand it you process it and you reinterpret it and rephrase to write the summary so this is the most important stage of summarization generation it is the third stage uh <clears throat> example of compaction can be like uh, i would uh, say uh combine and compress as far as possible possible is the example of compaction this is asked over there in on youtube so i request all youtube viewers to please uh, uh have a patience and we can discuss this uh towards the end and no doubt compaction is easy compressing data is easy but reinterpreting the data and rephrasing the data or the information is a tough job so i recommend you go the tough way the hard way and you will get a good score no doubt the third stage is generation you compress it further and you reread it to increase the density and you omit these parts yeah Deepak is asking on YouTube, sir. We have to write summary in past or present tense. Write summary in the tense of the given passage. Okay. Don't change the tense. Okay. So I hope I have uh, answered your question, Mr. Deepak. So let's go to the interpretation stage. Okay. this is as this is very important stage i am uh, giving only interpretation stage here as an example because uh, towards the end we also have to write a summary here in this live class and let's see how it gets 
so interpretation stage interpret compress and reformulate the extracted output in ways that are new using words not contained in the input document so this is the stage that you learn to master the skill what you have to do <clears throat> get the idea understand the main idea and the supporting ideas and uh, reformulate it rephrase it in your own words and use complex structures more see uh, mistakes can happen when you are making uh, complex sentences but that are best uh, forms of sentences to use in summary writing and you can reinterpret the vocabulary and use your own you can use the alternative or what we can say the summarizing language for this stage for example jonas was hungry he found a suitable place went in sat down the waiter brought him a menu jonas ordered a hamburger which he thoroughly enjoyed after paying he left satisfied so now tell me the text the given passage is in front of your eyes on the screen now can you try typing the summary of this passage just one or two and then we will move any answers okay no responses on youtube as well so we can proceed <coughs> so this is the given passage for, it must be taking time for typing sir okay so i will wait wait for two more minutes and the answer has come okay Jonas was hungry, so he ordered a hamburger. Then he paid and left. Sakshi Satpute. Good try. Jidnesa says Jonas was hungry. He went in a restaurant, ate, and then left satisfied. Who is this? Hmm. Jidnesa. Good search, Jidnesa. Sachin, that he is typing. Okay. Uh, any attempts Students, in the Zoom? From the Zoom, please, uh, please type it. Okay, we are getting it. responses on YouTube. So YouTube students are more active than the Zoom okay. VIP students. Jonas was hungry. He ate a burger and left the restaurant. Then Krishna Patil says Jonas was hungry and found a suitable place. He ordered a hamburger. He enjoyed it and paid and left satisfied. So Krishna, no punctuation. So <laughs> <laughs> straight away, start to end. Jonas was tired, so he rested. Sachin, they after taking food, Jonas paid and felt contained. Some typos there. Okay, let's see the answer. Actually, this is not. Panandi the... has given a nice answer, sir. Who? Ah, uh, this girl. so oh, she deleted hands so but it was uh, apt okay <clears throat> so i uh, i am getting the impression that while writing summary you are not using any punctuations 
maybe this is happening due to the live class no problem but when you are writing a summary you have to pay attention to punctuations as well vandana patait says jonas was hungry so he ordered hamburger and left satisfied after paying good good so let's see what uh, i have written jonas was hungry so he enjoyed a hamburger at a restaurant that's it so if you go on and actually count the words actually that shouldn't happen you shouldn't count the words so it, it's around one third of the given passage when you are writing a summary and that's what we are following uh, for our evaluation pattern as well so this was just an example now before we go to write summaries let's look at the steps how to write a summary what will you do when you get a text any passage let me check the chat in the zoom okay 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 thank you so back to this process writing uh you have to scheme the text scheming i have already told you scheming is reading for getting general information so whenever you get the activity sheet you just scheme the text actually you have already read the text so this step is already there in the 4a part then you will identify and rank the topics to include now there is a catch because this unseen passage is not a fresh one for summary writing and you have already attempted some questions based on this passage so when you are going to write a summary you already know the topics which are important you already have identified because there are certain activities on the important points one or two so you already know so this is the pre writing of a summary these two steps then you create an outline where do you create an outline in your mind or on your paper what would you prefer let me see the answers <clears throat> vedan says in mind 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 everyone all our super computers oh mind good great great but students who feel that uh they need some space to jot down no, the one, ideas no one one person is saying paper yeah yeah one person is saying paper but uh, don't follow what others are saying just follow your heart what your heart says so my heart says i will use paper and pen to put down the ideas or even to mark the ideas because when i am reading uh, i can i have the habit to mark or to put or highlight the text which i have to convert into a summary so i will use paper uh, activity sheet or the last page of my answer sheet there i will write the rough work and there i can do this so no harm in doing this students it's your space you can use it properly wisely then you have to actually you come to actual writing and you have to write an overview what is overview and uh, one thing i would like to tell you this uh, summary writing is also there in the ielts in the form of form of overview writing so this is very important skill if you want to go to uh, some foreign countries and abroad you have to clear the ielts examination that international english language uh, english language testing system so uh this is very important skill and in ielts you get a good marks if you have a good overview and the supporting details i mean in the summary so writing and overview is a skill you don't get it on the very first day or if you think that you will practice in two or three days it won't come to you because a writing skill it needs a practice 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 so you need to practice in writing overviews you can uh google the ielts examination and overview questions there are uh, some uh, category of questions like type 1 type 2 type 3 so you get a lot of samples over there 
so it is the writing an overview is a skill and you have to uh, build it to the practice so first you will write an overview how many sentences only one sentence then you write supporting points so you omit all the uh, negligible things all the examples are in some passages examples are also given so if you feel that examples are not important or not explicitly it is important to mention the example you can bring it in your sentence no need to write for example and give all the details but you can mention it okay so write supporting points one sentence or two sentences at the most and finally third or fourth sentence rephrase the theme and conclude okay so this is a process writing an overview supporting it with some main details uh, writing in a overview supporting it with details and rephrasing to conclude okay yes overview is the main idea of the paragraph actually this is a process and there is a very uh, renowned author jeremy harmer who has created a writing process wheel all the teachers must be knowing this so i will show you what this writing process wheel is you have to follow this writing process wheel when you write anything not just the summary even if you are writing any information transfer question or even if you are writing the view counter view point you can use this writing process wheel that applies to anything there is one question from sachin dahi how to rephrase theme rephrase means sir you have to uh, you don't have to use the vocabulary and the language that is given in the original passage but you have to reconstruct reinterpret that information am i not audible now you are audible okay was there some problem no 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 it was not heard means the sound was a bit low <clears throat> okay and finally uh, before you leave the summary writing you have to recheck the details what happened is there any problem i feel no the problem is with his phone okay please you are audible okay thank you very much for the feedback so before you leave this summary writing you just go back and recheck the details whether you have written it properly or not don't spend too much of time over there okay so we will see what is the writing process wheel have you seen this anywhere this is taken from jeremy harmer 2004 book let's write page number 6 and this we have uh, i mean the teachers have studied in the chess training and other trainings as well so these are the stages of writing what do you do you begin with a planning means you scheme when you read the passage you plan you identify the topics then you go to drafting you start writing the overview and you uh, start writing adding the uh, supporting details then you can go to editing and after uh, putting it in words in sentences your final version is ready but this is a reversible process wheel where after looking at the draft you can feel that oh my draft has missed some point so you can go back to the planning and when you are editing i means when you are rereading your uh, passage the summary you can think that oh i have missed it somewhere some points are not there then again you can go back to planning or drafting you can draft it again or just you can add those points so editing part is there and then comes the final version so i hope uh, this uh, process wheel is uh, uh, is very much easy uh, tukaram umar dand ask can we add our own points in summary no i have already mentioned tukaram and maximum time limit dipak k is asking maximum time limit is 10 minutes 
so don't overshot the time because you already spent some time over the previous question the passage question number 4a so these are some tips on writing a summary just write using summarizing language so what is summarizing language periodically remind your reader that this is a summary by using phrases such as the article claims or the author suggests so you are free to use the phrases like the article claims that or the author suggests that where would you put it at the very beginning no doubt okay so this is using summarizing language don't forget to write the title what happens when we correct the papers when we get a lot of papers uh a lot of good students they write very good summary but in hast they leave the question or they don't revisit their written article last stage was revisiting so they don't revisit their article and they forget the title so uh title carries a lot of importance actually it carries one mark and don't write in bullets uh, what happens some students they tend to write one sentence and two three four bullets and con concluding sentence so this shouldn't happen over there again so don't write in bullets uh mohatashi wali asks so first we need to make the dummy and then go to the final version yes mohatashi and uh, you have to maintain the time uh, limit you have to follow the time limit keep a tab on time when you are writing the summary okay how can we decide the title of the summary sayed imran uh, imran uh, the title of the summary is usually given in the very first uh, sentence in the given paragraph in the given passage so uh, we call it a topic sentence or theme sentence it introduces you to the topic so topic is always there in the first sentence in the given selected paragraph raj again asks what is the meaning of don't write in bullets bullets the bullet points numbering star marks dash bullet points main points so let's write students i want you to uh, put these three uh, points on a blank page like overview supporting points and conclusion do you have the pen and paper yeah lorna disuza should it be written in one paragraph of course it should be only one paragraph summary should be one paragraph it shouldn't be one paragraph followed by one more paragraph or line only one paragraph tanu kumari asks sir can we write title in our own idea yes but it should be corresponding to the given theme so i hope you have the pen and paper with you and you have to write the main idea then leave some space then supporting points then leave some space and again conclusion and leave some space this is the template for writing a summary <clears throat> ready shall i share the paragraph the passage for writing summary yes this is the passage for the practice sake we will take 7 uh, minutes to finish this okay sorry that was by mistake raj you can get 5 out of 5 marks but only if you write a summary i can see you are not writing a summary now
so time is ticking two minutes over tick tock tick tock five minutes left Three minutes left. Uh, Raj says title for summary writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you think of some other title, please, Raj? <clears throat> not compulsorily, it is there in the first line, not compulsorily. You can get the overall idea what the passage is about, and you can have it as a title. Yeah, some very good answers coming over there in the chat. Very intelligent students we have. Renu ma'am, I must congratulate you. Thank you, sir. Students are always intelligent. <laughs> yeah, only we make them. <laughs> okay. Last minute. Okay, last minute. Meena, you have to write the title. <laughs> okay, my dear students, do you want to see the answer? Good, 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 Meena. Good, good. You want to see the answer? Yes, okay. Uh, before uh, uh, showing you what my answer is, I want to tell you one thing. I'll go back to the same statement that I made in the beginning, that not every summary is similar, or uh, there is no one best summary, okay? So all summaries, all answers will be different and all can get full scores. So this is what I attempted. I've written the title, The Northern Lights, or I can also write The Aurora Borealis, okay? So my overview is the Aurora Borealis or Northern Lights are bands of color in the night sky. 
<clears throat> in the supporting points i have written ancient people thought that these lights were dragon on fire some related it to the heavens on fire i have added one more sentence writing people were afraid of these glowing and dimming lights so i have removed the examples of colors there were examples of different colors okay and finally concluded with even modern scientists are not sure what they are so how satisfied are you with this okay so that was one example of how we can uh, deal with the activity on summary writing for the 10th and 9th standard students okay thank you very much can we have questions please so you have already answered all the questions from the chat yeah um in the youtube also you have quest answered all the questions and i cannot see any <coughs> questions in the in the zoom okay so uh, let me see yeah no no they are just praising today's lecture so awesome i tried to entertain you dear students and thank you for visiting this page daily and this is uh, i must congratulate renu ma'am for starting this series for students because there are a lot of webinars going on for teachers and this is the first one for students in maharashtra thank you sir so um, uh, no no i am uh, not getting any questions We all thanking you, sir. You made their job easy. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, so it was a wonderful session, especially taking the harder way instead of taking the easy way. Uh, that is something which uh, the students will take care of. And on behalf of the members of Mnet. i would like to thank mr nadeem khan for vol volunteering his time and providing us with such an informative and engaging presentation on the topic of summary writing it is one of the most difficult topic uh, that they were facing and the topic explained by you will be uh, will be of immense help for the students um many thanks to again nadeem sir because he has taken this initiative of providing all the help that he can for the students so thank you sir for that thank you very much ma'am and thanks uh, all the students and all the participants uh, again i'm saying if you have any queries or any doubt do let us know in the comment box we will try to rectify or we'll deal it with uh, in the future So yes, thank you, students. Thank you, sir. So you want to say anything? Thank you very much. That's all. We can wrap up the session. Yes, thank you. Sir. You are the host. Yeah, I am doing that.